Good afternoon from Brussels. My name is Michael Gebel from the European University Association. Um, welcome here to our webinar on uh, the MSCA for Ukraine program. As you're all aware, the Russian invasion to Ukraine had an uh, immediate and terrible impact on um, the population of the country, including academics and scientists. Um, many of them uh, tried to continue their work. Uh, many of them uh, left, at least temporarily, and continued um, their uh, research and uh, teaching from abroad. What we try to do today in this webinar, we will look at the individual uh, journey of um, three researchers that received a grant under the MSCA for Ukraine program. Um, they will talk a bit about uh, how their fellowship helped them in their research, in their careers, and also on the actual and potential contributions that it offers um, to enhance the links between their home and their host institutions. Um, can I have the next slide? So I have here Artem uh, Nazarko, uh, Ola Karaman, and Oksana Chukova. But before I turn to them, um, you should know a little bit more about the MSCA for Ukraine. Um, well, after the invasion in February 2022, it just took a few months for the European Commission to establish um, the uh, special uh, MSCA uh, strand uh, supporting uh, researchers and PhD candidates from Ukraine. And this has been done with the support of Scholars at Risk Europe, um, the Humboldt Foundation of Germany, and my organization, the um, EUA. And my colleague, uh, Dominic Calvait, is here to tell you a bit more about the program. Dominic, the floor is yours. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And thanks, uh, Michael. And thanks to our colleagues at EUA for organizing what's surely going to be a, a very interesting and hopefully thought-provoking um, uh, webinar this afternoon. Uh, I work for Scholars at Risk Europe, which is the European Office of the Global Scholars at Risk Network, and I manage the uh, MSCA for Ukraine program uh, as uh, uh, lead partners together with EUA and uh, uh, the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation. And as Michel had already mentioned, this was a, a, a fast uh, response as part of the European uh, Union's response to the full-scale invasion of Ukraine by the uh, Russian Federation in late February 2022. Um, uh, MSA for Ukraine is focusing on four main activities, uh, notably the provision of fellowships to researchers from Ukraine, uh, help desk and matchmaking services, career development and networking activities, uh, as well as support for reintegration to, into Ukraine, uh, of course, if and when um, the conditions for safe return are met. Um, to apply for MSA for Ukraine, um, uh, applicants were, uh, could be host institutions in EU member states and Horizon Europe associate countries, um, applying for fellowships of between six and 24 months at standard MSA doctoral and postdoctoral fellowship rates. And uh, at the time, we'd expected to be able to finance at least 120 fellowships with the overall um, uh, funding available for MSA for Ukraine, which is 25 million euro. Um, uh, uh, all disciplines were invited to submit, um, uh, so all domains of research, and we encouraged the commitments of up to one third of the fellowship durations, um, including the commitments in uh, institutions, with institutions in Ukraine. Uh, looking at the eligibility criteria, eligible where um, uh, researchers from Ukraine who were Ukrainian national stateless persons or third country nationals with primary residence in Ukraine by the time the full-scale invasion started on 24th February of uh, last year uh, and who were displaced on or after that date or ready to relocate from Ukraine. Uh, and as uh, Michel already mentioned, we focused on both um, uh, doctoral and postdoctoral fellowship applicants, so PhD holders and doctoral candidates. Uh, uh, who needed to possess the proper uh, language skills that are required to successfully conduct 
research and work activities in the host country in the host country uh, the results were announced uh, uh, earlier this year in late february uh, jointly by the european commission and by the consortium implementing this project uh, we had received over 400 applications by 11th november 2022 uh, the first cutoff point and almost an additional 200 uh, a, a, a few days later by 25th november of that Day. And uh, the uh, colleagues from uh, the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation made a great effort to establish a pool of over 450 independent reviewers from over 45 countries coming from a broad range of disciplines uh, and expertise. Um, uh, uh, those were reviewing the applications and the final decisions um, were with the selection committee comprising established scholars and representatives of organizations. Uh, that support scholars at risk. In terms of results, uh, 124 fellowships were funded through MSCA for Ukraine um, uh, in 21 different host countries. Uh, and in terms of the gender distribution, 65% of awardees are female versus 35% being male. And the uh, uh, um, funded um, uh, research proposals um, are within eight research areas, most notably life sciences and social sciences and humanities, uh, but also chemistry, physics, information science and engineering, uh, economic sciences, mathematics, environment and geosciences. Um, if we're looking at current and upcoming activities, of course, first and foremost, the implementation of the fellowships um, that is providing support to host institutions and to researchers when this is needed, uh, generally monitoring um, uh, uh, the progress of, of fellowships, um, most of which have started by now. The vast majority have started uh, uh, over the last uh, months, uh, and the vast majority will also last for 24 months. A second activity um, which has been on underway already for a number of months is to provide support to eligible but unfunded applicant candidates in seeking alternative opportunities, including funding. Uh, as you could see from the number of applications versus those that had received funding uh, just by the first cutoff date, uh, the ratio is approximately one in three, with many uh, of the applications being of very good uh, 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 quality in terms of scientific excellence. Um, and it is our aim to continue assisting all those that could not be financed because of funding limitations um, to either find alternative funding opportunities at national levels. So we're engaged with MSCA national contact points, um, uh, with other entities that um, uh, provide support, including financial support to researchers in different domains. Uh, and we also support uh, researchers from Ukraine through individual engagement, trying to understand what the needs are, understanding those are changing, sometimes at a, at a, at a fast pace, of course, considering the uncertainties in Ukraine and the need to um, find work and life opportunities uh, elsewhere in case of displacement. Uh, the, the third um, uh, field of work that we're currently focusing on are career development and networking activities. And the next opportunity will take place in uh, uh, on the 25th of October, midday for an hour and a half. And whoever is interested is, uh, of course, invited to, um, uh, uh, to contact us. Thanks very much. Um, thank you, Dominic. I think so. Now you know all about the MSCA for Ukraine. And um, just a question for clarification: There is no open call at the moment, right? I mean, there's funds that you mentioned that you try to uh, find for the. It's just for those who have been selected already or pre-selected, but where the funding was not enough to award them. That is that is correct. Yeah. There is yeah. uh, no funding yeah. available. At yeah, this just point. to no raise the expectation, no need to apply or no possibility to apply for the moment. But the other thing that you mentioned, so these networking activities and these trainings, these are open for all, not just for the those fellows who have been selected. So most of those activities are open for all. Networking okay. specifically usually focuses on the fellows. I see. Okay. So thanks for the clarification. Thank you, Jim. Good. I just have a look, but I think we have no question at the moment to you. 
there is a, I should have announced that there is a chat extra. You have a chat where you can communicate with each other, but there is also a special Q&A section. And please, if you have any questions to the speakers, put your questions in there and then we select them. Yeah. Okay, I think that's it, Dominique, then, for the moment. And uh, we come to our first um, researcher, Artem Nazarko. Um, Artem is a lawyer, um, comes from the National University Odessa Law Academy in Ukraine, and he is currently in uh, Bergen, Norway, but this is not the only destination that he had. Artem, I hand over to you. Yeah, thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, so. So may I start uh, slides? Is it okay? Yes, all good. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm truly honored to be here today as a speaker on this webinar, and I would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity uh, to share my experience with you. Uh, today, I will address uh, several questions about my MSc for Ukraine journey. Um, so, uh, let's start with the first question. What made me apply for the MSA for Ukraine program? My decision to enter the path of the MSA for Ukraine program is rooted in a challenging and horrifying circumstances that have defined my academic trajectory. Uh, the Russian invasion of Ukraine in February 2022 forced me and my family to leave Ukraine unexpectedly, leading to interruption of my doctoral studies, which I started in 2021. From that moment onwards, I found myself in a situation where I was unable to continue my work on my dissertation and obtain a PhD degree. After facing these tough times, I started looking for a different way to finish my research project. Uh, it was in fall of 2022 that I unexpectedly came across information about the MSc for Ukraine program. This discovery offered me a ray of hope, a chance to revive my interrupted academic aspirations. The appeal of MSA for Ukraine program can be summarized into crucial benefits that caught my attention. Firstly, the program's two-year duration provided available opportunity to revive my interrupted academic journey and ultimately achieve my goal of obtaining a PhD degree. And secondly, the program allowed me to apply to any university in Europe, giving me the freedom of to choose a university and supervisor that perfectly matches my research interests. Uh, so, uh, now let me provide some insights into my background and research area. My academic background is firmly rooted in jurisprudence with a special focus on international law, particularly in domains of international criminal law and humanitarian law. Furthermore, I have a wealth of practical experience having worked extensively in my hometown of Odessa. Now within the framework of my current MSc for Ukraine project, I'm working on research ventures that delves into the issues of the domestic prosecution of war crimes in Ukraine. My project not only involves theoretical investigation, but also has a practical dimension. I'm planning to conduct training sessions for lawyers, prosecutors, and judges in Ukraine on this, on this crucial subject matter. Additionally, I aim to develop particular recommendations for enhancing Ukrainian legislation to ensure a more effective response to war crimes within the country. This multi-faced multi approach reflects the holistic nature of my research and its potential impact on the legal landscape in Ukraine. Uh, so, uh, regarding the interplay between my current and my past uh, research posts. During the 2022, I actively participated in various project and support programs for Ukrainian researchers in countries such as Czech Republic, Austria and the United Kingdom. However, a striking distinction lay in their relatively short duration, spanning from three months to one year. While they, certain, while they certainly helped me with my research, they didn't give me the full scope needed to complete the project and earn a PhD degree. This is where the MSA for Ukraine program is different, especially from my point of view. It lasts for two years, which is a great opportunity for me to finish my ongoing research and move on to the next step of my academic journey. What's, uh, uh, what's even better is that the program not only supports research, but also offers the chance for a secondment which add an extra dimension for my academic career. The financial support for the program is crucial for Ukrainian researchers like me, especially during these challenging times. Uh, so uh, how is my fellowship going so far? Uh, my fellowship experience is nothing short of exceptional. Starting my fellowship on 1st of June this year, it has been only three months, but I have made significant strides in advancing my research. 
Beyond my core research activities, I'm actively engaged in a diverse areas of academic pursuits, including courses and seminars, which serve to improve my qualification and expand my academic horizons. On the social front, the support I have received from my host in university has been unwavering. All logistical challenges associated with relocating to a new country has been resolved, ensuring a smooth transition. I have been fortunate to have outstanding supervisors guiding my journey. One of them, Terje, is a highly respected and distinguished lawyer in the field of international criminal law. My other supervisor is Lilia, hails from Ukraine and has been living in Norway for several years. Her invaluable assistant extends beyond academia, helping me to acclimate to my new surroundings. It was Lilia who submitted the invitation application to University of Bergen on the MSA for Ukraine portal. Uh, our conversation is our in our native language, uh, Ukrainian, during lunches, uh, a lovely aspect of my experience. Uh, so, uh, before joining the MSc for Ukraine program, there, are, there wasn't any established collaboration between my home university of Dessalo Academy and my host institution, University of Bergen. In fact, I'm proud, proudly represent the pioneering link between my home university and the University of Bergen. Uh, as a testament of our commitment to develop the future collaboration, I maintain continuously communications with my home university and remotely conducted seminars for students in Odessa. However, the cornerstone of our collaboration lies in our joint research efforts. Together we, with my esteemed colleagues from Odessa, we are actively engaged in research pursuits, and I'm keenly aware of the challenges that many Ukrainian researchers face when seeking to publish their work in Europe. Having passed the way personally, I, I possess a profound understanding of the potential pitfalls and hurdles that can emerge during this journey. Therefore, I provide consultations and guidance to my Ukrainian colleagues on selecting the most effective publication strategies. Furthermore, I offer my services pro bono to proofread and refine my colleagues' articles before they are submitted to foreign journals. I firmly believe that dissemination is a vital aspect of the academic, academic uh, researcher's life. And I'm deeply committed to facilitating the publication of Ukrainian research in the global academic arena. Uh, our future collaboration, uh, collaboration plans. One of the most significant collaboration initiatives is, uh, is the upcoming legal conference scheduled to, for February 2024. This conference will take place at the University of Bergen Faculty of Law and it's dedicated to the second anniversary of the full-scale Russian invasion of Ukraine and the 10th anniversary of the annexation of Crimea. We plan to invite researchers from Ukraine and my home university to share their insights on, its, on this topic. This con conference represents a notable example of the future collaboration we are building, emphasizing the importance of fo fostering academic partnership between institutions and advancing our understand as the understanding of critical issues. Uh, so, in conclusion, I'm grateful for the opportunity that MSc for Ukraine program has provided me, both in terms of academic and personal growth, as well as the potential for straightening academic collaboration between my home university and host institution. Thank you very much for your attention. Well, thank you very much, Artem. That was a fantastic insight in your um uh, in your academic activity uh, at the University of Bergen. As you mentioned, joint research, how does that work then? Is there is there a, a, a joint research team or are you linking researchers from Ukraine with those in Bergen or? Uh, yeah, thank you for, for the question. Uh, basically, we are working together as uh, like probably in some independent researcher uh, with my colleagues in Odessa, which I worked before I left Ukraine. Uh, and we have cited some um, results of this um, uh, collaboration. We published um, one uh, manual for students in Ukraine, and we published uh, three articles in um, well, well established, esteemed um, European and American journals together. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm really proud that um, even some big and well uh, well established publishers are really welcome and they're interested in Ukrainian topic in particular uh, not only war crimes uh, which is my mm. basic my uh, primary um, uh, topic but also another another topics as well 
Uh, so you yeah, had the what, topic of war crimes. You had this already before the war, right? Or was yeah, that a decision uh, triggered by yeah. the invasion? Uh, it, it, you know, it's uh, accidentally uh, I, I, I picked the right topic, uh, if I if I can say like that. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I think the the um, issues of uh, developing Ukrainian criminal legislation uh, uh, is. Um, not only started like uh, one and a half year ago. So this discussion around war crimes uh, prosecution started even before when the crim Ukrainian criminal court was adopted. Mm. But now it's much more important because as for today, we have more than 100,000 registered war crime cases as a statistic mm. of uh, uh, our Office of uh, General Prosecutor of Ukraine. Mm. So it's a, a absolutely huge, uh, insane amount of cases, which is uh, just put on the uh, current uh, judicial system in mm. Ukraine, and uh, we definitely need to develop new approaches, maybe some collaborations, and also my um, supervisor in, in my host, uh, home, host institution, uh, University of Bergen, Terje, he's ex-judge, and he uh, also had some hand-on experience uh, in uh, prosecution and judging, and also some uh, a, a really big um, theoretical and uh, research knowledge and experience, which is, I think we will build a really good, uh, like we will try to implement a really good project and really help Ukraine, not only in a, mm. uh, in a sense of scientific way and develop of uh, academia, but also beyond the academia to improve some legislation and make yeah. some practical training. You so mentioned the training before, how would that work? How do you see that um, uh, yeah, being implemented? Uh, I, I think that we will establish a collaboration between our national association of advocates and judges and um, Norwegian one uh, and make maybe some training sessions, uh, at least online. It depends on security, of course, uh, but uh, at least online sessions with some tips and trainings, how to how is better to provide this prosecution and <clears throat> investigation. Uh, but also, it's a like um, outcome of the project, which we swift and postpone to the later stages of my research. And now I'm mostly involved in research work. But I think in the last uh, six months uh, of my project, I will we will implement uh, these um, trainings as well. We will we aim to do it, mm -hmm. uh, and I hope it will be really interesting. And I will definitely report and try to disseminate it. Uh, in media, um, uh, our efforts to improve this situation, and uh, I'm really hope that it would be like that, how we expect it. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just saw a question here on whether it has been attempted to do a kind of Erasmus agreement or probably a kind of Erasmus project between your home institution and your host institution. Uh, yeah, uh, so actually now we have no uh, any agreements, uh, any bilateral uh, agreements between our universities, but we uh, have these plans. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, it's also depends, you know, uh, really with um, uh, a bit bureaucracy and, you know, it's not on the top of the list for Ukrainian university right now. Mm -hmm. uh, they already started the academic sem sem semester, uh, now it's September. And, you know, it's a lot of uh, organizational work, but I think uh, we slightly step by step will try to organize this proper um, uh, proper collaboration agreement between our university, at least probably. Uh, it's also our, our second uh, like uh, option that we uh, want to organize some lectures for from Norway to Ukrainian students, at least like for now, for uh, earlier steps. And then maybe to organize a proper collaboration in the sense that Ukrainian students can come to Norway uh, for visiting semester, like at, at least mm. for six months, you know. Uh, yeah, but it also depends not only for me, uh, uh, it's not only my <clears throat> matters, but I really push it with my supervisor, Lilia. She's really, uh, she's uh, Ukrainian woman. She's really interested in, in this collaboration and I'm really proud that I met her. And thanks for her many times. I, I, I really <clears throat> appreciate your, your efforts to mm. make these links between Ukraine and uh, Norway. Uh, yeah, I, I hope that together we will uh, overcome any hard lessons on this way.
Yeah, so also a clear indication that this is not about individual scholarships, but also an outset well, okay. possibility for collaboration. There are also many people are interested in what your, are your plans after, and you talked already about your um, academic plans, basically. But, I mean, you, you mentioned before that it is good that the MSCA for Ukraine is two years. But what do you think happens after you, the two years? You will be able to finish your PhD in that time and then look for a an, an, um, new position? Um, yeah. So, uh, actually, yeah, I, I highlighted a few times during my presentation uh, that one and maybe the most crucial um, advantage of the MSC for Ukraine program for me as a doctoral candidate, it, this uh, its duration because I can finish my PhD degree in two years. It's it's enough time to finish my project and um, present my thesis. Uh, but afterward, uh, after after this, this after my defense and my viva, uh, I hope uh, it would be positive viva. Uh, I still like my plans are still taking like taking shape. Uh, but uh, I also consider both to stay in Europe uh, in some universities in, in like in a broader sense in academia, but I still considering option to come back to my uh, home city Odessa because I'm really missed it and I feel homesick. Uh, yeah, and continue my work uh, in Ukraine, but it also depends not only on security uh, security issues, but also on maybe governmental policies funding mm. opportunities uh, and i think it's um, really um, really a big issue in ukraine because now we are mostly fund uh, uh, defending uh, defending options like uh, uh, war related uh, costs not mm -hmm. uh, it's not the time you know for for research and i i understand that the ukrainian government do uh, their best but but anyway uh, mm. i think that it's too early you know to make plans uh, now I'm most concentrating on the finish my PhD degree and uh, get my get uh, get a degree mm -hmm. and finish my thesis. Uh, so, but anyway, I think um, yeah, I will consider both uh, and Ukrainian path and European yeah. one as well. But anyway, I think after after these two years, the links between Ukraine and uh, mm -hmm. Europe be, uh, be, be, will become more stronger. So mm -hmm. it would be easier to you know, working in a both uh, uh, environment in Ukraine and Europe and mm. travel and secondments and collaboration. Yeah. I hope so. Good. Thank you very much, Artem, for the moment. Thank you. Maybe we have a chance to uh, discuss uh, later on a bit. But I bring in now our next researcher, and this is Ohla Karaman um, from the National Cancer Institute um, in Lithuania, this is actually a hosting institution, but you're actually currently not in Lithuania, but in um, Chicago in the U.S. Chicago, you know? the US so, yeah. Ola, tell us a bit from more. Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Hello, everybody. Um, let me introduce myself. I'm Olga Karaman. Uh, until February 24, 2022, I work at... Um, Cancer, uh, Kavetsky Institute of Experimental Pathology, Oncology and Radiobiology, Kyiv. And I was a senior researcher of laboratory of oncoimmunology and cancer vaccine design. After um, Russian invasion, I moved to Vilnius with my 17 years uh, old son. And I started work at the National Cancer Institute, Vilnius, Lithuania. At, uh, right now, I am senior, a senior researcher of laboratory immunology. So, oh, why? Um, my project uh, uh, about bacterial lectin and cytokine-induced killer cells as a way to improve cancer immunotherapy. I um, follow the ship period uh, from uh, April 22-23 to March 22-25. Before the war, my research involved studying the effect of cancer vaccine on the anti-tumor resistant system. And also we study how the bacillus subtilis bacteria lectin can affect macrophages and prevent these cells from switching to tumor-associated cells. But 
now my current research uh, more about manufacturing protocol for obtaining cytokine induced killer cells and also how we uh, can improve um, these cells and uh, we uh, try to uh, use bacteria lectin and uh, other option so uh, as you can see my research uh, don't completely change it's about uh, uh, cancer immunotherapy but um, mm, how uh, I uh, decide to apply MSC for Ukraine. In March 30th, uh, 2022, I met Professor Michael Nishimura. Uh, he's uh, from uh, Loyola University, Chicago. Uh, his current research is the study of the genetic and biology of T cell receptor genes and T cell gene modified T cells. Uh, he, uh, the last 20, uh, 35 years of studying T cells and tumor immunology has led to three clinical trials and 28 patients treated with gene modified T cells. So it was very exciting for me because it's, uh, uh, it's very complicated technology and I want that we have this technology in Ukraine and uh, right now I stayed and working in Lithuania and Lithuania as well. So Professor Nishimura invited me uh, to the same annual meeting 2022 and it was in Mainz, uh, Germany and after meeting and discussion with Dr. Nish Professor Nishimura, it became necessary to master the method of uh, constructing viral uh, vectors for TCR modification, obtaining lymphocytes with chimeric antigen, and obtaining gene-modified lymphocytes and cytokine-induced killer cells. So this, um, there were uh there were the main reasons for seeking scholarship so also um, msc for ukraine why uh, i applied um uh, uh, tells the following a monthly living allowance what uh, it it it, uh, it was very uh uh, very neat for me and also mobility allowance it's also very important for me family allowance i said that i uh, moved to vilnius with my son it also was uh, uh, important for me and also a monthly contribution towards institutional management and research networking and training cost so this is reasons why i apply for msc for ukraine and uh, my academic mentor from host uh, organization is Professor Vita Pashukonis. And uh, right now I um, have a second mentor, um, second mentor, and my second mentor is Professor Mike Nishimura, second mentor organization, Loyola University, Chicago. My second month started on August third, and um, I will uh, uh, hear until November twenty seventh, twenty twenty three. So, completion of the internship will allow me to generate T cells and cytokine induced killer cells with specific anti tumor activity, to contribute research using in vivo system and for the development of a new approach for cellular anti tumor immunity. Internship will allow me to improve my theoretical and practical skills of generating recombinant. Uh, CAR, uh, T cells, and TCR retroviral and lentiviral vectors. And also, internship will allow me to rapidly transfer this gene therapy the technology to Ukrainian and Lithuanian scientists for preclinical and clinical studies. It's for future my plan, my goals. 
And also very important that presentation my data at the laboratory meeting, which Nishimura Lab has, will allow me to establish connection for cooperation with colleagues who also work in the field of anti-tumor immunotherapy. But not only, I have not only professional experience, but also uh, um, I, a little side seat. So uh, completion of the internship will allow me to have a great time in Chicago, the United States. You can see my both mentor. Uh, we, uh, we were at the Museum of Science and Technology, Chicago. And also I can see American football for real. So it was excited for me. And research, my research is ongoing. And right now, thank you for your attention. Well, thank you so much, Ola. And uh, that's really an interesting um, development, I guess, when you, uh, you you had not in mind to go to the US actually when planning, when, when applying to the MSCA, uh, or did you? Was that, Sorry? was that part of the plan when you applied for the MSCA for Ukraine? Yeah, it go was. To Chicago? It was already. Yeah, yeah, it was okay, because good. according to my presentation, why I saw, um, uh, I said about uh, how I met uh, my professor Nishimura. Because yeah. before the, um, I, um, you, uh, uh, European Union, um, uh, decide uh, to um, open MSC for Ukraine. I mm. met Professor Nishimura and, okay. uh, and it's um, start to change a little my research. Absolutely, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we have here the question, what are your plans for cooperation uh, with Ukrainian institutions? And if I can add to that, do you have any links uh, still to your home institution? Sure. Sure. Uh, uh, before the, I received MSc for Ukraine scholarship, I also have um, a small project, Lithuania Ukrainian project. And mm -hmm. right now we work uh, uh, together. We all time um, have uh, online meeting. And mm -hmm. also I right now I know that uh, we can apply for um, Ukrainian, Lithuanian, uh, the U.S. Uh, project for collaboration, for uh, education, Ukrainian scientists. And I, as I said, I want to, to bring uh, car -T technology to Ukraine and Lithuania. Mm. So it's, it's, it's very complicated technology. So we need yeah. to learn. So it's my uh, You need plan. what? Sorry? You need? You need uh, learning. <clears throat> Learning, yes, yeah, 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 learning. yeah, yeah. What would that take? You mentioned that the transfer of this gene therapy. What what would this take apart from learning? Oh, it's. Uh, How do you get that to Ukraine? What, uh, to be honest, it's very difficult, <laughs> but uh, mm, I think it's uh, it's possible. It's. Uh, I, to, to be honest, I don't know how I can do it, but uh, gene, gene modified uh, lymphocytes, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, from, uh, uh, people use it from 2015, maybe, maybe okay. early. Mm. So it's not so, so new, new technology, but mm. it's always, uh, it's improved all time. Mm -hmm. Mm. And uh, in Ukrainian, we need uh, sequencing. We need uh, we need uh, teaching or learning a lot. Uh, okay, a lot so it's a matter of training and uh, yeah, all time training, training. Educate yeah. And, and yeah, okay. Um, yes. What do you do when your grant finishes? When your fellowship finishes? You have also two year fellowship. Uh, when my grant? You mean MSc yeah. for Ukraine? Yeah. Yes. When it's finished, I want to continue my research uh, with uh, mm. cytokine-induced killer cells. And right now, I try gen-modified 
mm. uh, received and modified uh, cytokine induced killer cells. It's why I uh, I'm right now stay uh, and work in Loyola University. Mm. Yes, and I almost I have uh, some good results, positive results. Okay. And I want to uh, continue, so I need funding, you know, and. Mm. Uh, if it's possible, I will cooperation with my colleagues from Ukraine. I uh, continue a cooperation with, I hope, with my colleagues from the United States. And uh, I will continue our work in uh, National Cancer Institute. Okay. Well, thanks so much for the moment. And uh, I have no more questions here for you, as I can see. No. Then... Um, and then we have our third and last um, researcher here this afternoon. And uh, I welcome Oksana Chukova, uh, an MSEA Ukraine fellow at the at DAISY, the German Electron and Synchronton uh, Institute in Germany. And she is actually from Tara uh, Shevashenko National University in Kiev. Oksana, floor is yours. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Many thanks to the organizers for the possibility to talk today about our views on the uh, strengthening of the Ukrainian higher education and research uh, university sector. Uh, my name is Oksana Chukova, and today I am presenting here Deutsche Elektron and Synchrotron uh, Desi Hamburg, Germany, uh, the largest synchrotron in Germany. But uh, for many years, I was uh, affiliated in Taras Shevchenko National University of Kyiv. This is the main university of Ukraine. Uh, here you can see pictures of our main building, uh, its halls, and uh, my faculty of uh, physics. I uh, was a student in this university, as a PhD student, junior researcher, and passed away up to senior researcher and uh, had no plans to change my affiliation. But after the Russian invasion and uh, after the few days in, in the ground place in Kyiv, my family decided to leave Kyiv and uh, we had no plans for the future. We simply lived uh, our uh, home. After that, I have got a three months visiting scientist fellowship in the Institute of Physics of Polish Academy of uh, Science. Uh, then I moved to Hamburg and uh, having got a visiting scientist position in uh, at Petra 3 P66 domain line of uh, Deutsches Elektron and Synchrotron uh, DESI. Initially, this position was uh, for six months, uh, then it was extended uh, for three months uh, more. And uh, it was uh, only after moving, moving to Hamburg that I decided that uh, I should try to, uh, to draw some uh, research proposals for uh, several calls in order to receive a few uh, funding abroad for continuing my uh, research work and my uh, attempts. Uh, the last uh, autumn of 2022, uh, I have submitted uh, more than one uh, project application, and uh, uh, all my applications were successful. Uh, without any doubts, I uh, choose uh, the MSC for Ukraine program uh, because uh, uh, this program is the best uh, possibility uh, among the others uh, because at least I have 24 months for, for my research with uh, clear work uh, planning for the future, not three months, not six months, 24 months, and uh, we can uh, plan. Uh, my previous research background in Ukrainian was connected with luminescence materials and metals. I carried out a design of new luminescence materials for various applications. Those are uh, lighting systems, uh, luminescent con converter for uh, solar cells, and so on. 
and development of luminescence method of monitoring and sensing because luminescence method uh, are widely used in biology, medicine, um, uh, uh, registration of ionizing radiation and for forensic testing and so on. Uh, and uh, I also was involved in physics more uh, in development of physics model uh, describing electronic processes. Uh, those are responsible for a region of luminescence uh, emission. Understanding uh, of this process uh, of uh, the main mechanism of luminescence emission is very important for uh, research uh, as uh, we can pre predict. Um, uh, uh, good uh, composition of materials as so can be effective and uh, so so to uh, go to, to the new materials in, in a more short way. My uh, current uh, project and uh, current area of scientific activity, activity is uh, completely the same as my uh, uh, previous uh, research. Uh, uh, the MSA from Ukraine project uh, aims to, uh, for the future, future de development of ideas. Uh, those were uh, realization of those were started at uh, Tarasovchenko National University uh, of Kyiv. Uh, and uh, the project is based on uh, our previous uh, knowledge and our previous results and experiments and continue uh, them. But uh, uh, in instrumentation of the research is uh, completely uh, different from uh, those that I have in, in Ukraine because now I am working at a uh, large uh, scale facility uh, and uh, using uh, I am using a synchrotron for investigation or a synchrotron light for an investigation of luminescent properties of uh, uh, my uh, of uh, the uh, luminescent materials. Uh, as uh, for the wo working environment and uh, human contacts, I should uh, say that uh, Desi host uh, uh, gives uh, uh, great international uh, communications and uh, new free uh, friends uh, connection with new colleagues and, uh, and now I have a, a very uh, a good and established uh, group in Desi but um, despite of the, this uh, I feel uh, strongly feel a lack uh, of communication with uh, my previous research, research partners because um, I was uh, uh, tight, tightly collaborating uh, with um, uh, uh, colleagues of uh, Faculty of Chemistry of uh, uh, my uh, home, Tarasovchenko National University of Kyiv. They were synthesized. Uh, new luminescent materials I uh, was uh, involved in an investigation of these materials and uh, then um, sen sent uh, my feedbacks to colleagues from Faculty of Chemistry and uh, they took into account uh, this feedbacks uh, into um, development of new compositions. So this uh, was uh, uh, tight collaboration and now we uh, try to continue this collaboration I will say uh, about this uh, later uh, about uh, academic and social aspects uh, of my current MSc for Ukraine fellow uh, I should say that uh, MSc for Ukraine uh, have uh, funds for conference travel and cooperation vi uh, visits and um, uh, I'm going to take visit to Ukraine and also I have presented uh, my uh, current results at uh, several uh, conferences. For, for example, the uh, Desi Nanomad Science Day, I had uh, invited talk uh, at the European Material Research Society Spring meeting in Strasbourg and uh, today uh, I will have one more uh, talk and, uh, and the uh, full meeting in Warsaw of the European Material Research Society. And um, uh, a few weeks ago, I have visited international conference on luminescence uh, in Paris. This is a main 
uh, event for uh, all those uh, uh, who are uh, who are involved in luminescent investigation. It's a very good uh, uh, conference. Uh, also, I should uh, say that uh, I have got a lot of support in Desi with uh, several uh, working group uh, and uh, staff and colleagues. And especially I would like to thank the European Project uh, Office of DESI for Susanna and Greta. Uh, uh, I have got a, a lot of support uh, with uh, my career the development plan and data management plan and uh, informational support. Uh, also, I uh, uh, visit visit uh, language courses in, in DESI and uh, if it is needed, I can uh, obtain uh, uh, psychological uh, helps, uh, help and uh, uh, career development uh, help. Uh, so I have very, very friendly and help you, helpful community in DESI. About my uh, current collaboration activities uh, between uh, uh, my uh, host and home institutions, uh, I uh, sa said that it is very important for, for me to continue collaboration because um, I uh, uh, study luminescent materials. Those are synthesized mainly, synthesized by my colleagues uh, from faculty uh, of uh, chemistry from Tarasovchenko National University. And here you can see uh, uh, my colleagues from Tarasovchenko University. Uh, they, uh, here you can see Tatiana Vitenko. Uh, she is uh, my main co-author co uh, for, uh, uh, for the last 10 or maybe more years. We uh, together developed a new composition of uh, luminescent monodate nanoparticles and achieved a uh, very efficient uh, luminescent com composition. Uh, this, my colleagues, came to uh, DESI once uh, mon months ago for experiments. Uh, here you can uh, see a screenshot uh, from uh, the uh, P66 uh, uh, bin time sh schedule, schedule. And you, you can see that uh, Tatiana Vitenko uh, had been lying in August. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> sorry. So uh, our, this is our team visited uh, Desi and in uh, October, uh, the next uh, team also will uh, visit DESI and uh, uh, we develop a few future co collaboration. Uh, so about my home university. My uh, home university uh, were damaged after Russian attacks several times. Uh, the most damage, uh, damages were uh, uh, got at October 17th, uh, the main building was damaged and uh, at the last day of December of the previous year, uh, my faculty was damaged. Uh, we uh, lost uh, a glass in the windows. This is my uh, working place in my home university. So now it is uh, not possible to use uh, this room because at least it is not possible to head. Uh, them because they are without windows. So about, uh, but the, despite of this, faculty of, of chemistry is undamaged. So my colleagues can produce new uh, samples, new nanoparticles, and also uh, I prepare some samples in DESI and uh, we are uh, continuing our collaboration. We have already submit one uh, research proposals uh, for uh, Eurozone competition. Now it is waiting for uh, results. Uh, uh, the project leader of this proposal is Igor uh, Fesic. Uh, he is associated professor of Faculty of Chemistry of Trasevchenko National University of Kyiv and uh, the main collaborator uh, proposed for, for this project is Alexei Kotlov. Uh, he is my uh, he is mentor of my MSCA for Ukraine 
uh, fellowship and uh, he is uh, p66 the line manager in Tassie. Uh, so the project is devoted to green synthesis of luminescent synthoxide nanoparticles uh, we are going to carry out the synthesis with using of plant extract and uh, reduce uh, redu reduction uh, against and um, uh, this uh, project is um, devoted to development of new generation of rare as free uh, luminescent materials. Uh, also, we plan uh, uh, to make some application for uh, other uh, research called with the participation of Tarasevchenko National University of Kyiv and P66 Beamline uh, uh, of Deutsche Elektron and Synchrotron. And uh, in, in December, I am going to uh, have a second mentor to my home university. Uh, so our collaboration is uh, continue and I forgot to say uh, I have a student. Uh, so, so with uh, uh, double uh, supervising, uh, Daria Breus is my uh, bachelor student preparing uh, her diploma as student of Taras Shachanko National University and carry, uh, she is uh, carrying out uh, experimental uh, works uh, in DESI for, for uh, her diploma. Uh, so thanks for your attention. Well, thank you very much for your presentation, Oksana. I think that was really uh, very insightful. Um, had your institution been in contact with DAISY before, or is that a new uh, relationship? Yes, we, we have uh, been in contact uh, um, before for many, many years. Uh, first time I have visited uh, DAISY as user at mm. uh, or also not at P66 this time, it was uh, Beamline uh, E, uh, Super Lumi. The current Beamline P66 is a successor uh, okay. for, uh, for a Super Lumi Beamline. And uh, we were, um, many times we were users. Uh, we came as users uh, to, to, to this Beamline uh, to, with our samples to carry out uh, uh, research measurements and uh, currently I uh, try to invite more people from Ukraine uh, for uh, these measurements as I am working in hmm. the 66 line to, to show them possibility. If, only if they are staying in Ukraine they, they can take their samples and uh, come to, to our line for measurements. Okay, how do you transport your samples? You, you just take them with you? Uh, sometimes uh, we take the samples uh, with me. Uh, mm. Yes, uh, I have mm. experiments, many year experiments to to carry out uh, samples uh, with, put together with cosmetics. But yeah. this year we also yeah. uh, try to say, send the samples uh, officially, and it okay. was successful. Uh, I only have paid uh, 45 years from my MSA fellowship for custom <laughs> proposals. <laughs> for custom. <laughs> Yes, my, my colleague Tatiana Vitenko, she, she is also uh, uh, lived in Ukraine for, for sh sh short, uh, she, she, now she is working in Cambridge, and yeah. uh, she sent me samples from Cambridge, okay. and so it was, it was successful. <laughs> okay, it so maybe that's okay. something that, that we should bring forward to ensure that um, research materials can be exchanged uh, customs free across mm -hmm. Europe. That would be very important. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for your input. We are actually, our time is almost up, and I thought I could ask one question to all three of you. And this is, I mean, you, you, you praised and hailed the MSCA for Ukraine. If you could improve it, what, how would you do that? Is there anything to improve? Ladies Oksana. first. Yeah, Oksana. So, for example, as for me, I invited my colleagues for measurements and uh, thanks to Desi, they had got uh, some financial supports. 
but uh, if I will care, uh, have a small possibility to maybe use my uh, cost to help uh, my colleagues from Ukraine to, to come to Desi, mm. for, for example, to, to cover uh, their uh, travel expenses from okay. my... So some more flexible funding for um, allowing for yes more, to, to uh, help uh, colleagues uh, yeah, come into networking me. and collaboration. I think that's an interesting one. And I, Artem, you had also an idea. Uh, uh, actually, yeah, I think that uh, MSA for print program is uh, excellently balanced. And from my point of view, it's generally no any uh, disadvantage uh, from my perspective. But uh, I believe that. Uh, Further support uh, could be somewhere like uh, in uh, establishing some uh, cross uh, subject conference for MSA for Ukraine grantees mm. uh, to present their research results, maybe some midterm after one year and present like organize this conference somewhere and that everyone can come and present their results on the last year, previous year. Yeah, so I think it would be good and maybe some uh, uh, pre uh, <clears throat> publish some um, uh, conference uh, results, conference um, mm. materials afterwards. So okay. I think it would be yeah. good, like uh, some summarize our results after yeah. one year. I see our colleague Dominic is taking notes here and he is really in the driving seat. He may have a word to say right afterwards. Ola, last word for you. Uh, I know that uh, my colleagues uh, from National Cancer Institute has some problem with the financial uh, part of uh, MSC for Ukraine. They don't understand how they uh, have to, uh, how would say, correct uh, division uh, money. Okay. So maybe yeah. this is part need improve, and also I know that uh, part of my colleagues has pro had problem with uh, uh, found host organization. Mm. Maybe need uh, uh, organize some. Um, no, but you 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 really did it and do it, yeah. and I hope it will do um, seminar. How correct uh, my colleagues, I, I mean, Ukrainian yeah. colleagues can found the uh, host organization because indeed, it's, I think we provided quite a good list for uh, yeah, yeah, matching but, uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it has to be done on a very short period of time. I think that was really the challenge there. But thanks also for the suggestion um, on the funding side and everything. I mean, simplification is clearly something that we all um, engage for and hope for for the next program generations. Um, Dominique, do you have a last word for us? Anything that you observed from here or that you take home? Well, just this was uh, extremely interesting. So thanks a lot to Artem or Oksana for your insights. Uh, uh, super useful. Um, I would have a last question. If you have a suggestion for fellow MSCA for Ukraine awardees, how they can strengthen the links back with their home institutions in Ukraine, what would that be? May I start? Uh, from my perspective, I think that, yeah, uh, we're doing our best uh, to make, to straighten the, these connections. Uh, and I think, yeah, in many universities, in personally, in my case, we have a special advisors on MSCA, uh, generally, MSCA projects, and they provide me, yeah, a lot of support and guidance. Uh, but in, in a sense of collaboration with my um, uh, home institution in Ukraine, I think it also depends on variety of different, uh, you know, heartless. It, it's really, it, 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 it really depends. Uh, but I, I'm not really sure that we can in somehow improve it and uh, make it easier from uh, generally program point of view. It, it, it depends in case to case. But uh, yeah, I think the duration that two years you can really try to establish the, uh, this collaboration between your home and host institution. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it's enough time to, to, you know, to do these uh, efforts well. Okay. Great. Well, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, Michael, uh, thanks also to you and to all your colleagues at, at EUA who made this uh, possible. I know there was a lot of work in the preparation of the event. Uh, so. Thank yeah. you on, yeah. on behalf of everyone here at, at MSA for Ukraine. Yeah.
thanks and thanks to Artem, <coughs> Oksana and Olha for taking time to share here with us today. Um, there was a question on whether we would continue this or do another event uh, of this kind. We certainly will, but none has been scheduled yet. But I think I have one uh, announcement here. Can I get the slide again? So of an upcoming event, yes, indeed, there is an a uh, webinar on open science uh, on the 25th of October. So um, that might be of interest for you. So that's it from us here today. And to be continued, keep in touch. Uh, have a good afternoon then. Bye.